Hey, welcome back to From Scratch Ranch in our modern farmhouse build. Jason here, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how we constructed 200 linear feet of steel handrail and installed the Haas Axis cable railing system from eRigging.com. So stay tuned. For the horizontal handrail portion, we're using 14 gauge one by two square tubular steel. These things come in 20 foot lengths from the steel yard. I just went to the local steel yard to pick this up. Way more economical than going to a big box store to pick up steel. It just doesn't make sense, especially for the quantities I need since we got 200 linear feet of railing to do. So that's the top handrail piece. The vertical supports and um, the feet and caps that we're gonna cut are gonna be cut from this uh, two inch wide flat bar or flat strap. This is quarter inch thick. Um, it needs to be a minimum of a quarter inch thick for that vertical support um, that we're gonna drill our holes in for the cable to go through. I'm gonna cut off two inch pieces, one um, for the caps on both ends with holes I'll drill to screw it in, to anchor into the posts, and then another two inch for the feet of the vertical support so I can screw it into the deck or the concrete. The reason I'm using the flat bar for the verticals um, instead of the tubular steel is because this is steel. It's not aluminum or stainless steel. This will rust. So what if I had used the tubular steel to drill all my holes for the cable to go through, water can get in through those holes, get inside and start rusting it from the inside out especially since it'll be closed off, capped at the bottom with the feet. Um, I don't want any water getting inside here. This is not, um, this will rust. So when I drill the holes through the flat bar here, that'll get primed and painted. So it will be protected from uh, rusting out. So the reason that this system works for me with the flat bar versus uh, bigger posts periodically all the way around supporting this railing is because I already have 23 six by six cedar posts supporting the roof of the covered porch all the way around front and back. So I don't need bigger posts. Each one of these railing sections is gonna be around 12 feet or less. So I'll only have one or two of these vertical supports per section that are gonna get bolted in between those cedar posts. That's why this works for me. If I didn't have all of those cedar posts, this would definitely have to be uh, a different system that we'd be building here. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut myself a template for the vertical supports here. This is gonna be a 36 inch vertical. I'm gonna cut it 35 and three quarters to account for the quarter inch thick foot that we're gonna weld on. So we'll measure that out, 36. And this is gonna be a template, 35, three quarters. This will be cut to a template for the whole placement. We're gonna have eight different cables running through this and I want them exactly positioned the same for every single one of those vertical supports. So this first one's going to be a template. Cut them at two and a quarter inch. I want one inch on each side, quarter inch vertical. All right, to create my template, I'm gonna measure one inch, which is the center. And draw a line down the center here. From the top, 
I'm gonna measure every four inches because I want eight cables every four inches. And then I'll just draw my lines straight across to intersect that center line there. And I'm using just a, a soapstone pencil here to draw on the steel. Okay, so now I know the intersection of every hole. There should be eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now I'll just use my drill press to drill a quarter inch hole at each one of those intersections. So now using my drill press, I can easily align and clamp down and then I've got a clamp right here clamping from the bottom. I add a little lubrication so that it doesn't get too hot and go for it. Now I just move on to the next one, right on down the line. This can get a bit tedious with 20 plus of these to do. Now we have our template that we will you now use to make another one. Make sure everything's lined up right. And just using a Sharpie. This is a a lot faster than having to measure each one out. Okay. There we go. Now we'll drill that one. Alright, so now for all of the feet and calves. So on the feet, I just need two holes, one on each end. Okay, so there's your foot right there. The vertical will go right up the center there. Okay, now I need caps. I need to drill the holes for my caps. So on the top here, the, the rail will come across here. That's that tubular steel. But then on the bottom, I need two holes right here so I can screw in uh, the anchors into the cedar posts. Okay, there it is. All right, you ready? Yeah. All right, so we're going to start with this end here. We're just going to three sections right here. One vertical in between each post. 
So three of them. You write that down. Take notes on your phone. Mm -hmm. 73. Okay, this one is 111 and three quarters. And this one is 74 and one quarter. Got it? Yep. All right, let's build these three sections and go ahead and weld them, all right? And then we'll see if they fit. Okay, got all the steel cut and drilled and ready for my welder, <laughs> Michaela, to weld it all together. But first, um, two of them were too short and I just had to use the last bit of uh, pieces to weld them together. These pieces right here, so each one of these is a rail section and I've got all the parts, you know, that I've drilled and ready to go to weld, weld together, except these last two right here we're gonna have to weld them together to extend it because I didn't have enough. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Can you weld that together? There's two of them. Yeah. One there and one here. What, what, yeah. what do you want me to start with? Yeah, the, the, the ones that we want to extend to make longer, those two right there. So then I can go and measure and cut them in length and get it ready for, you know, yeah. while you're welding the rest of it. Yep. Okay, so yeah, let's start with those two. I'll probably just tack it real quick just so we make sure that it's not like this and we'll go and eyeball it make sure it's you know straight not yeah. bent one way or the other and then I'll weld the whole thing okay. I mean, that side wasn't pretty because it had to fill holes. Yeah. But all the others should be fine. And I mean, it should be, it should grind, grind down just fine. So, this here is kind of the post um, that the wires will feed through. Yep. Um, and this will attach the railing eventually. But these are the feet for the post. And so these will go on the end with a hole on each side of it for the screws. Okay. And then what about the magnets? The magnets we know are a perfect 90. And um, so as long as we can mine 
this piece up to the magnets, we know that it will be flat and square and yeah. level, plumb, I guess. Yes. Um, so I'll just tack it because you don't want to weld with a magnet. Um, so I just tack it, make sure I know it's the right. Yeah. Check the right that bottom thing. one doesn't look like it's. Yeah. No. So now what? So it's tacked? So now I'm going to go back, start on this side, and I'll just weld in there and on both sides, and I'll make sure I weld the edge here. Yeah. So when um, he grinds it down, it, you still don't see that seam. So you adjusted the settings? The settings. Um, why? Because we were welding on this thinner stuff. Yeah. Um, and now we're moved to the thicker stuff. So I just adjusted it so the beads will be prettier, therefore making it easier job for you to grind down. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. And so we've already measured and marked this. on the end yeah so much heat builds up like in the middle whenever we're doing the legs oh you mean so that's why we're doing them last that's why we do the caps last so yeah. it can all the heat can escape so the heat can escape before i put on the caps because the caps really don't have um they don't build up as much heat because there's less welding with them so um that's why we do the caps last so the heat has something to go and it doesn't trap the heat and it'll warp, warp the metal do that I mean because the tap won't get too hot on your hands mm -hmm. um, I just do that to make sure that everything's like so I can feel yeah, okay. all the edges and make sure everything's in the right place and I'll put my glove on when I actually weld it but okay just I'm making sure that I don't feel any gaps or anything because it will move when you tack it like especially on little pieces like that that aren't super heavy when you tack it it will kind of pull it one way or another so I kind of just make sure I keep my hand on it to Help keep it there and feel to make sure it didn't move.
going down. Now I can start grinding. Looks like you got wings. All right, I'm gonna have to help you get this up here, I think. All right, now that Michaela's got all of the steel all welded together and I've got it primed and painted and set in place, it's looking pretty good. They're just sitting there for now. I need to now uh, plumb all of these up properly, um, measure everything out, make sure everything's good to go, and then anchor it into the uh, concrete here and then into all of the posts. And then we'll be able to install all of the Haas hardware and then all of the cable. Um, I'm not gonna use a level to see if this is level because this porch slopes from the back to the front so it's not going to be level the railing is not going to be level but what i do need is for the distance between the porch or the deck in the back to the bottom of the rail to be exactly 36 inches all right i'm just gonna double check make sure i'm at 36 and i am good And these are some headlock uh, timber anchors or uh, timber, what are they? These are the, the headlock structural wood screw. So it replaces the 3 8 lag screw. Okay, now that's good and anchored. We've got to start and then we'll go do this other side. Okay, that's really good and strong so now we just need to make sure that our center post here is plumb both directions all directions and then anchored into the concrete so this I will use a level for because it needs to be plumb use my hammer drill here in a concrete bit to the size specified for the concrete anchors It's drilled out, you want to use compressed air to blow out all that dust down in the hole also. Because if you don't, then that dust will just pack in there when you try to put that anchor down in there and the anchor won't go all the way down. Be 
before I drill the other side, I'm gonna anchor the one side in. Just to hold it in place. Cause this one was happened to be slipping cause it's a little just off. So that will hold that in place while I drill the next hole. Little layer. Good to go. This one's done. I'll just come back with a little touch up paint, paint those black. <laughs> 